So often when I'm speaking about relationships between men and women, or doing any kind of help with couples, so often I talk about how important it is for a man to provide containment for the woman that he's with. But so many men and also women are confused about what containment even is, much less how to provide containment for someone. For that reason, I've decided to do this episode entirely on containment. Before I get into this video, I have to actually say that this video comes with a big warning. This video is going to run up against so many erroneous yet deeply cherished beliefs around sex equality. It's also going to run up against so many erroneous yet deeply revealed beliefs around power and freedom relative to women. What this means is that I'm going to have to ask you to keep a really, really open mind and also separate out your own personal triggers from this objectively intellectual conversation about containment and about the sexes. Another thing, this episode is about something that men do for women in relationship. It's not about what women do for men in a relationship, so don't expect me to go into that during this video. As a last disclaimer, because this episode is going to be controversial, most likely, <laughs> I gotta mention something. You can play your relationships literally any way you want to if it's something that works for you. The thing is, you gotta be really, really honest with yourself and ask yourself the question, is what I'm doing in my relationships really working for me or not? And when I ask this question to so many men and women, the answer to that is no. And for women, so many of them answer no to this question because the man in their life is not actually providing them with containment. All right, let's get into it, shall we? The first thing that must be said when I get into this topic is that men and women are different. This automatically means that men and women are not the same. In fact, if they were the same, on a physical level, the way you'd see that manifest is by a being having the exact same physical structure. Until the day that we are willing to accept that men and women are different, we will never be able to actually create harmony in a relationship between men and women. This is critical because so many of the people who fight so hard for gender equality erroneously do so by fighting for gender sameness. In other words, they try to establish equality of value or equality of power or equality of whatever else by trying to prove that men and women are the same. Sorry to break it to you, but this is a super losing argument and it's a losing strategy because they're not the same. Bottom line, and I'm going to start with this, containment is something that women need in a relationship in order to feel good in the relationship. If you want to understand this even more in depth, you can watch two of my videos titled, first, what every man needs to know about women, and second, why women like assholes. The bottom line is, and I never want you to forget this, women cannot feel good in a relationship without containment. Before we go deeper into exactly what containment is and how to provide it for a woman, I'm going to have to uh, address the demographics of women whose behavior or whose words suggest that they don't actually need containment. A big group of women who act like they don't need containment or as much containment are in fact getting that containment from somewhere else other than the primary man they're in a relationship with and usually that's their family of origin still. Another group of women simply seem like they don't need it because they seem so capable of fending for themselves. In fact, they simply had to accommodate for, acclimatize to, and compensate for the lack of containment in their life. Contrary to the first group of women who act like they're okay without containment from a man because they're getting it actually from their family of origin or some other place, this group of women don't act okay. They tend to seem feral, displeased, controlling, anxious, and uptight. Now let's talk about the group of women who outright resist containment. With these women, when you look at their childhood upbringing or young adulthood, what you see is trauma relative to what they associate with containment. It's really not containment but they have trauma relative to lack of freedom, feeling limited, feeling controlled, and things like this. Oh, another thing is, is that a lot of the women in this demographic feel like anytime they're getting containment from a man, it's some sort of a weird message about them being weaker or less than. Guess what? These women and their behavior also don't seem fine, because even though they will tell you and even act like they don't want containment, they still don't act okay. In other words, they exhibit all of those negative behavioral characteristics that are associated with having a lack of containment. 
To conceptualize of masculine containment, I want you to imagine that in a relationship, a man represents a clamshell and the woman represents that pearl inside of the clamshell. This is a healthy representation about the relationship between divine masculine and divine feminine. This masculine clamshell is creating a safe, nourishing space in which the female can exist or occur. It enables a woman to be soft, open, receptive, and to grow. If you imagine removing that masculine shell, the female immediately contracts goes rigid and into a state of defense. In other words, it's a coping mechanism instead of a natural state in and of itself. And whenever there is that lack of masculine container, the female actually has to cope by becoming masculine herself. Now, when she does this, this has a negative impact, not just on her mind, on her emotions, but also on her physical body. Essentially, this causes a flip in polarity. And that flip in polarity is not only unhealthy for her, it's to blame for so many of the relationship issues that are happening between men and women today. With that image in mind now, let's look deeper at containment. To contain a woman in this context is to actively, not passively, create a safe space of well-being for her. The healthy masculine energy creates a container in which the feminine can truly exist and thrive. To do this, a man must take positive ownership of a woman. Many people have a negative association with the concept of ownership. But this means that they threw the baby out with the bathwater, right? The reality is that women actually want to be owned. They just don't want to be limited, oppressed, controlled, or seen as less than. And the travesty is, as a society, we've taught women that this is what ownership actually is. When a woman is owned, it's essentially the opposite of the energy of her being a stray. And women, to be completely honest with you, do not do well with being stray. So here's the thing about positive ownership. When you take something as a part of you to the degree that it belongs with you, it actually becomes a part of you to the degree where you can't actually hurt that thing without also hurting yourself too. So positive ownership is really the only way to stay genuinely safe in a relationship regardless of whether it's between a friend and a friend of the same gender or a woman and a man in a primary partnership. If you actually take positive ownership over something, the best interest of that thing is of your utmost concern. This makes a woman feel happy in a relationship. To understand more about this, you can watch my video titled Own People, How to Take Ownership of Your Relationships. Many men who don't understand what it would practically look like to provide containment for a woman would benefit by understanding that containment is essentially to fend for a woman. When a man does not do this, a woman essentially has to fend for herself. To fend for herself is to look after, protect, and provide for herself without help. When a man fails to provide containment for a woman, she ends up feeling like she has to do it all herself and fend for herself. This means a male who lacks the skill of containment inevitably makes a woman feel like she's all alone. Not just all alone, also unsafe, starved of needs, and as if all the pressure is on her. This will make a woman become controlling, anxious, hard, cold, masculine, bitter, angry, and resentful. And again, it's going to cause her mental, emotional, and physical well-being to corrode. If you want to provide containment for a woman, I don't want you to let her or expect her worse to fend for herself. Instead, think about fending for her on a mental, emotional, and physical level. In any situation you get yourself in, think, how can I fend for her in this situation? Do you want to know a sad reality? And no, this isn't an argument you get to make that I'm objectifying women by making this comparison. Most men, many men, take better care of their car that they drive than the woman they are in a primary relationship with. A man who takes positive ownership and who therefore creates containment for his car acts in the best interest of that car. He doesn't let the car fend for itself. Some men rub their car with diapers to keep it clean and protect the paint job. They appreciate the hell out of their car emotionally. They put energy and effort into the upkeep of their car. They keep the oil tank full and rotate the tires and learn all about the engine and lock the car door so no one steals it. And guess what? Doing this actually makes them feel good. So what might providing containment for a woman where she feels genuinely positively owned and fended for look like on a physical level? I'm going to give you a list of examples, but know that there could be so many more. It could look like to energetically put your energy around her no matter where she is and you are in the world. To take responsibility for her well-being, which is the positive form of claiming her. 
to create safe, supportive conditions and a safe, supportive environment where she can grow and expand, rather than expecting her or encouraging her to grow and expand by virtue of her not having those safe and supportive conditions slash environment. To do things that create a feeling of security on any and all levels for her. To provide for a woman in terms of resources. This could be financial or otherwise. To take it upon yourself to create improvement in her life without being asked to do so. To take charge of a situation by taking the lead. To be reachable and available to her. To be initiative relative to her. To be active relative to her well-being instead of passive. To protect and defend her physically. To protect her emotional well-being. To do things like open doors for her, or pick her up in your car, or pour water into her glass, or have her take your arm when walking down the street. To reassure her. To remember important dates and make those dates special. To attune to her mental, physical, and emotional state so that you know what is right to do or not do relative to her specifically. For this, you must put considerable energy into understanding not just women in general, but her specifically. To do things that take pressure off of her without her having to ask. To organize a date with all the details totally under your control. To take charge of logistics. To initiate repair if rupture occurs in the relationship. To put effort into meeting her needs, and wherever necessary, to help find ways for her needs to be met outside of you. To be physically with her, or to make sure she's okay when she is not with you. In other words, to make sure she does not have to fend for herself when you are not around to fend for her. To not put her in lose-lose situations, to not put her in dangerous situations, to deliberately create regular time to be present with her and totally focused on her, to appreciate her, to be communicative and speak your mind as well as to listen to her, to caretake the relationship itself, to be and to act committed to her, to do things that cause her pleasure, to make decisions, especially tough decisions, to take responsibility for your decisions and actions, to figure out what needs to get done and actively get those things done. To take responsibility and initiative for facing and resolving problems you might become aware of or things you might need to heal within yourself. To provide containment for any children you might have together and or she might have from another man. To be in your masculine energy and power. To help her face the parts of herself that are resistant to being contained rather than to simply stop giving her containment when she resists it. Now keep in mind, now that you have heard this very long, yet definitely not complete list, that it's not a really good idea to think about all of these things and to just try to memorize them and do them. The best way to go about this is to just simply decide to take positive ownership and to provide containment for a woman. When a man does this naturally, because containment is actually natural for the masculine, all of these containment providing things naturally come as a result of making that decision. In other words, because it's actually second nature, the minute you make a decision to actually become a container for a woman, it's not like I need to tell you how to do it. In the past, there used to be a saying, over the mysteries of female life is drawn a veil best left undisturbed. Sorry to tell you, but that's complete BS. And if you want to provide actual containment for a female, you're going to have to throw that concept straight in the trash can. Because in order to actually provide accurate containment for women in general, you're going to have to understand as much as you possibly can about women in general. And in order to provide containment for a specific woman in your life, you're going to have to understand her to the best of your ability. Going back to the car analogy, which is so helpful for many men. Providing containment for and taking positive ownership over a Ferrari is quite a different experience than taking positive ownership and therefore providing containment for a Ford Taurus. Women are very much the same in many ways, but they're also very different in many ways. So it's very important to put the effort into understanding women in general and the woman who you are with. To learn more about this, you can watch my video titled Stop Trying to Love Them and Start Trying to Understand Them. So, women. Now is the time for you to face and resolve the resistance that you have to actually being provided containment by a man. To the other side, men. Now is the time for you to face and resolve your resistance to providing containment for a woman. As you do this, I need you to keep something seriously in mind. Containment has absolutely nothing to do with being controlled, being oppressed, being limited, or being looked down on. And in fact, if a man adds any of these things to your life, 
he's not actually providing containment for you. Quite the opposite, because those things are not actually in your best interest, and thus he's not in alignment with positive ownership. Now, a lot of you have been getting upset when I do relationship videos about men and women about how straight-focused instead of homosexual-focused I am. I'm going to throw you a bone today. Containment is still something that's needed in a homosexual relationship. But there tends to be a lot more of an issue in homosexual relationships relative to power dynamics. And this just means that the relationship to containment becomes a whole lot less straightforward. Usually, the partners do best when they communicate openly, honestly, and freely so as to mutually and consciously decide what containment they will provide for each other in the relationship and to what degree. There's often a higher degree of flip-flopping relative to who is containing whom and in what situations and why when you're in a homosexual relationship. And these decisions that define the how and when one person is containing the other is largely based off of what makes each party feel like they're in their personal power. And healing aside, in a homosexual relationship, that mutual process of defining containment within the relationship obviously has less to do with gender. But I'm going to say this in this episode and maybe do a whole standalone video on this eventually. In a homosexual relationship, it is so incredibly important to clearly define what roles each person in the relationship are playing for each other. Because one of the shadows, which you can fall into with containment as well in a homosexual relationship, is falling into the shadow of no roles. Containment is not something that is only natural for a man to provide for the woman he's romantically in a relationship with. Containment is something that is natural for any man to provide any woman regardless of whether she is a mother, a sister, a daughter, a friend, or anything in between. Guess what? It's also natural for men in general, in society, to provide containment for women in general within society. And ancient cultures, tribal cultures, that are now, of course, basically destroyed, did a much better job at providing containment in this way. Containment used to be something that the men in general in society were responsible for teaching younger men. So containment was something that they expected from each other and held each other up to the standard of. And not only that, there was less pressure on every single man, because if they could guarantee that the men in general were going to provide containment for the woman, all the pressure wasn't on him. That pressure was actually diffused. What this means is that men, or young boys rather, let's start with young boys, young boys who are born into a society, used to be taught how to contain by virtue of themselves getting containment. And then once they came of age and they started to reach their adulthood or young adulthood, they would then be directly educated and even put through tests that actually proved that they could provide containment or educated them into providing containment, so it wasn't like they were at a total loss once they hit their manhood. These cultures, of course, simply didn't use the word containment. It is at this point that I'm going to have to give you a sad fact. The single family home, and even more than that, the broken single family home, is perhaps the most destructive structure that has ever been created within society. It is also to blame for why there is so much wounding relative to containment within society for both little boys and little girls, and therefore men and women. So many men who struggle with providing containment struggle with it because they never got containment as little boys. They did not get the opportunity to learn by example, and they were not directly taught about it by other men. So it is, in essence, a developmental trauma. And for this reason, because it's a developmental trauma, so many men really grow up stunted in this way. And instead, they start to turn towards women, primary relationships with women, in order to have the woman give them containment. Anytime you've got this type of developmental trauma, you've got to essentially make up for what you lacked in your childhood life, in your adult life, and I know that's frustrating. But obviously, men who are in this position of not really ever getting containment themselves or being taught how to contain and then are sort of fumbling around in the dark to try to figure it out, they tend to subconsciously go for polarity flipped relationships. It's my hope that within society and especially amongst men, there will be more awareness about this issue around lack of containment. And then there will be men who step up and provide containment for other men and who teach them how to contain women. So all this being said, you can definitely learn how to contain a woman. So all that I've said being said, I want to leave you with this. 
Providing containment in a relationship is not something that only makes a woman feel good in a relationship. It's also something that makes a man feel good in a relationship. When men are healthy, they love the feeling of providing containment for the women in their lives. In fact, it gives them tremendous purpose, value, and self-confidence to do so. Have a good week. If you liked this video, be sure to share it, like it, and also subscribe to my channel so you can see more content like this. But I want to personally thank you for taking the initiative and having the bravery to step into the space of awareness, not only for yourself, but for the benefit of those around you.